Welcome to the War Academy channel. Today, we have a very special program, in which for the first time, we are going to compare, the two German field marshals who were the most decisive for their country. And it is that without a doubt, both Manstein and Model always occupy the first positions, in all the lists of the best strategists of the German army. But, who among them achieved more victories on the battlefield? Who performed more ingenious maneuvers? I'm sure that if we did a vote on which of them was better, or simply which is the public's favorite, the score would be tremendously adjusted. So, next, we are going to solve the questions previously raised, in which we will analyze their greatest victories and defeats so that each one at the end of this program can opt for one or the other. To put ourselves in context, the first thing we have to take into account is that they were two men who, although they were taking part in the military actions of this conflict from the first moment, each of them had their peak at different times. In the first place, Manstein began to stand out both in the Polish campaign and in that of France, due to his contributions and the planning of said attacks. Later, he commanded a series of units throughout the Barbarossa operation that also made him stand out as a frontline general, in addition to his well-deserved fame as an organizer and planner. It was after his successes in the Siege of Mariupol, in the north of the Sea of Azov, when Manstein began to be granted more important commands. It was precisely here that he achieved one of his most important victories after taking the city of Sevastopol, which led to his promotion to field marshal. This being, his greatest achievement to date, settling in the summer of 1942, Manstein would now occupy the most important commands on the Eastern Front. After a brief stay in Leningrad, he is called to solve the disaster that was taking place in Stalingrad, and from that moment on, he carried on his shoulders the greatest weight of the fight on the Eastern Front until he was dismissed at the end of March 1944. From that moment on, it can be said that it would be Walter Model, the man who would occupy Manstein's position, continually being transferred to where the situation was most critical. As for Model's rise to prominence as a unit commander, we have to go back to Operation Barbarossa. In this campaign he was under the orders of Guderian, and could be distinguished as a very capable major general. Model directed one of the spearheads on Moscow, although as we know, this operation could not be completed in the end and the Germans were forced to withdraw. It was precisely in this withdrawal that Walter Model stood out applying defensive tactics with very good results, which did not go unnoticed. This began to draw much attention to Hitler himself, who saw him as a capable general who carried out his orders to resist, using everything he had, instead of looking for excuses to initiate withdrawals. This would see him promoted, and by early 1942, he was given command of the German 9th Army, which was involved in a series of defensive fights that led to the Rezef salient. While Paulus's troops sank at Stalingrad, Model's troops had held their ground on this ledge, stopping Soviet troops in their tracks even superior to those who had attacked in Operation Uranus. After a meeting that Model and Hitler himself held after this episode, the German leader himself recognized that Model was one of the best generals he had and that he fully trusted his abilities, although he would not like to serve under him. Model was a general who squeezed his subordinates to the fullest and made them overcome any limit. Although his troop had no choice but to stay in his position to the end, many officers often asked to be transferred to other locations when they learned that Walter Model was going to be sent to his position. With this we come to Operation Citadel, in which Germany launched its last major offensive on the Eastern Front, risking everything on this card. For her, both Model and Manstein were the protagonists, however, the balance at the time already tilted in a very favorable way for the Red Army. At this point, in which this operation ended up failing, Manstein would go into decline and Model would gradually gain more prominence in the task of continuing to delay Germany's defeat in the war. We have to point out here, as we saw in the Manstein special, that the relationship between these two quarterbacks was pretty bad and they both put up with just enough. In any case, this detail about their relationship is unimportant, being of more interest the relationship that the German leader had with each of them. 
And it is that, while the relationship between Manstein and Hitler was also quite bad, Walter Model did enjoy the full confidence of the German leader. Although Model committed suicide, a few weeks before the end of the war and could not leave memories of it, the same does not happen with Manstein. In frustrated victories, Manstein left a fairly complete description of Model, which, from my point of view, is quite close to the real thing. This opinion is as follows. Model was a highly capable staff officer, without a doubt, shrewd, with clear intelligence and quick comprehension. Of medium height, slender rather than robust, with thick black hair and lively, sometimes piercing eyes, he made a youthful and optimistic impression. Model was tenacious and hardworking. His outstanding condition was in extraordinary energy, if a little ruthless at times. To these conditions, he combined a great poise and security in his manner and a remarkable decision and roundness in his manifestations. He was clearly an optimist by temperament, for whom the word difficulty had no meaning. Despite the fact that Model carried out actions in order to gain Hitler's sympathy and trust, it must be recognized that he had his own ideas in the military sphere and did not hesitate to support them with open frankness before Hitler, arriving on many occasions to risque words. Although he fully embraced and supported Hitler's rule, he was by no means one of those military fanatics who accepted his every order without question. Model was always a brave soldier, who personally did not shy away from any risk and demanded the same from his subordinates, somewhat abruptly in form, but always preaching by his own example, which made him find himself at all times in the critical places of his front. He was, in a word, a soldier fit for Hitler. After this description provided by Manstein himself, we now have to situate ourselves on the last defensive actions on the southeastern front, which would end with Manstein's dismissal, being replaced by Model. After continuing the work, that Manstein was already doing in that sector for a few months, Model was now transferred to the central sector to take charge of the great Soviet offensive that was expected in the area for the summer of 1944. With Operation Bagration, we found what in my view was the biggest defeat Model would suffer in World War II, although due to the total imbalance of forces, there was little he could do now to prevent it. After this massive offensive, he again succeeded in crippling Soviet troops near Warsaw in a series of fierce counterattacks that once again established a fixed front. Finally, Model would end his days on the Western Front, again succeeding in holding off Allied offensives for months, and also participating in the Battle of the Bulge. He would find death by committing suicide in mid-April in the Ruhr Pocket itself, when his units, already totally depleted and of little combat value, were surrounded in it. Having already seen his various service records, let's now move on to the more specific comparison. It is clear, that both marshals knew how to perfectly organize the units under their command, and were masters of both defense and attack. Both Manstein and Model were sent where the situation was most critical, and they always knew how to re-establish the line and manage to fight back. We can find a difference when it comes to leading your men. While Manstein was more sophisticated and was more of a map and strategy man, Model was a frontline general who liked to be present among his soldiers. While Manstein was always noted for his elaborate plans and his ingenuity, Model stood out for his determination and his total capacity for improvisation on the field. The main difference between the two, we have to find is not in his way of being or in his way of directing but rather we have to fix it by the period in which each one held his most relevant commands. While Manstein did it during the years of 1943, until the middle of 1944, Model would have it mainly from 1944 after Manstein's replacement. Manstein had to face a desperate situation for the German army, but Model from the middle of 1944, had to face an already impossible situation for Germany. The fact of achieving only defensive achievements, is perhaps what can most diminish Model's fame, since he does not have great victories like Manstein. However, this is the result of the time in which each one had said command responsibilities, and not so much because of their abilities as commanders. 
in any case, and putting both offensive and defensive successes on the same level, I sincerely believe that both men were practically at a similar level, and always knew how to get out of the most difficult situations, getting the most out of their units. Answering the question about which is your favorite quarterback, I would finally answer that mine is Manstein. But what about you, for which of them do you lean more? Manstein or model? I await your answers in the description. And finally, this is the end of this program, which I hope has been of interest to you, and I suggest that you also tell me what other two generals you would like us to compare. That's all, subscribe and support this channel if you like this video, and see you in the next program, see you soon.